So the hits keep on coming. Miami Vice, you directed the pilot for that show. How yeah. did that happen? Um, I had done the pilot to Call to Glory, and I had a meeting with with Michael Mann and Tony Yurkovich, who created the show, and uh, you know, just talked about directing it. I I, I thought it was I had known Tony uh, on Hill Street. He had been a writer on that show, and uh, this was something that appealed to me because of the possibilities of, uh, of of style and cinema that I thought I could bring to it. Uh, and it, you know, proved to be certainly one of the highlights of my career. And I think one of the highlights in, if I can say, with modesty to myself, but in, in, in terms of the show itself and television history, I mean, it's just one of those shows that made that kind of mark and impression and became a landmark show. But um, it, was a, it was a unique and special opportunity. Uh, there's a famous story, it may be urban myth, I don't know about, I think Brandon Tartikoff was the head of NBC at the time, and he had like a little memo, MTV Cops. Uh, was, did yeah. that help, did, did, were you aware of that, and that helped, did that help inform you at all in terms of uh, approaching this pilot? Well, there's a lot of uh, those stories, which I think is true about Brandon. I think he did write MTV Cops on a napkin. It's also said of Bruce Paltrow that he sort of wrote out a description of the white shadow on a napkin over dinner with Ken Howard, but uh, a lot of napkins, maybe we should be <laughs> using them more. Uh, but yeah, I think Brandon did do that because he just had this sort of notion. MTV was breaking and he thought, well, how do we do it with a genre? Um, uh, I wasn't, well, I guess I was somewhat influenced by that, of course, but, but not so much because I knew that lore that Brandon had done that, but I certainly knew we were trying to do something different. And when I came into the show, there was this notion of MTV cops, but it wasn't really on the page, MTV cops. I mean, they were guys who were, you know, undercover drug dealers, and there was a notion of, you know, having access to more high style, but there was no use of music in the script at that point when I came in that sort of allowed me to do MTV Cops. I had to bring that to it myself. I mean, the whole sequence, and I think the signature sequence in the pilot, which is the In the Air Tonight, the Phil Collins song, which is a no dialogue, all images and music mm -hmm. sequence, you know, I invented that. It wasn't in the script. Uh, I thought that there was a moment that I missed at a certain point in that story where Sonny Crockett had to hit rock bottom and had to figure out again, he had lost a sense of who he was and who to trust, and he had to sort of touch reality again before he could move forward in the story. So I really invented that whole sequence and, and I thought he should go to a phone in a phone booth and call his ex-wife and just ask her if what we had was real, if it was real. And if she said yes, he would have something that he could hang on to because he had lost his best friend and partner who had proven um, to, to, to have betrayed him and to betray the police force. And that if I could tell that, give that feeling of isolation cinematically, filmically, with images. And so I stole all those images that I used. I mean, I, we would be shooting other scenes. It almost, I don't think it was even on the call sheet. We, I would just do car mounts on the car from where we were shooting some other scene and say, go get me this on this street because the lights were right on that street and we could get the reflections we want. Remount it over here, get me this, get me that. And then I went out and shot, um, you know, the Crockett and Tubbs characters in that, Philip Michael Thomas and, uh, and uh, Don Johnson. And, and uh, we put the, I remember building the, the phone booth just on a, a lot, it was just a lot that was empty. It's just a phone booth almost in limbo with the, with the water beyond it. And we hung a sign, the costume designer, I think it was Lynn Bernays, and we just made a sign that said Bernays or Bernays Cafe, I can't remember what it said. And we just hung it in limbo right above there in the frame. So we were just creating reality out of just little pieces where the car would pull up and he'd just stop and he got on the phone and he called her, got back in the car and they took off now to go and finish the story. And uh, I called the editor and said, here's a song I want, because I had heard that song and I'd been haunted by it. And it just worked incredibly 
well. And I think that's what that show did best, uh, which is to tell story with music and images with as little dialogue as possible so that you were really seduced into the film. You were mesmerized by it. You were hypnotized by it. It so somehow caught you in a way that other television wasn't doing it. And that's what I wanted to do with that, with that show and what they continued, I think, to, to do.